Hey, everybody. Well, uh, it's been a while since I've done a lesson, and um, it's about time. Uh, I will, I'll give you a little bit of background as to why I chose this particular title and this particular subject matter. Um, because over the past couple of years in particular, it seems more and more Christians, uh, and non-Christians for that matter, have this mindset that America is going to hell in a handbasket. That's one of the, the more uh, popular phrases I keep hearing. Uh, or they, they ask the question, what's happening to America? Um, or you've heard a lot of the different comments uh, that actually sound very similar to, to the two things I just said. And I wanna address those in a way that kind of takes us back to the Bible, gives us a new perspective, because that's what it's all based on, a certain perspective. And so when we say America is going to hell in the handbasket, what are you actually saying? Do you actually believe? And if you know anything about the, the, the uh, phrase hell in the handbasket, it goes way back to the 18th century, from what I understand. And... Um, also became popular during the gold rush uh, here in America when they would put you know men down in a hand basket or in a basket, I should say, to search for gold and different things. Um, but it means to basically have a decline in such a manner that it is inevitable of total destruction and or total loss or depravity. That's what it means. Now, if you actually feel that way about America today, what do you think some of the people felt like back in the times of slavery, a certain a particular group of people, if you will, uh, where the nation wasn't even America? What do you think life was like for them? And we'll talk about these perspectives here in a few minutes. But what I want to do is I want to start off uh, reading uh, from the second, uh, the letter of Second Timothy that Paul wrote, chapter three, verses one through five, and it reads like this. But mark this: there will be terrible times in the last days, and we all know that the last days started to come into play. Well, came into play, I should say, with the ascension of Christ back to heaven. There will be uh, terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Now, I don't know about you, but I've only been on this word about, uh, well, right at 55 years. And I have seen this kind of behavior pretty much my entire life. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's worse today than it is or has been in the past, because what am I basing that off of? I've only been here for 55 years. I was not around during some of the most treacherous times covered in the Bible that God talks about, especially in the Old Testament, where every thought of every man was pure evil. I, I, don't, I just don't think we're at that point. And I think we need to really look at our perspective on things. Uh, the second uh, passage of scripture I want to read is, is Mark 7. Mark 7, verses 20 through 23. And this is where Jesus is really describing how people are, uh, how people are in general. Uh, 20 through 23 reads like this, and he went on, he being Jesus, what comes out of a person is what defiles him, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile the person. This is internal 
It's an internal thing that all of us struggle with. It's not anything that comes because of certain political parties in place or certain uh, societal movement is in place. Those things are a result of our inner sin, all of us. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes as well. So let's get into it. It's all about perspective. And you've heard the term, one's perspective is their reality. Not necessarily is that reality true, but it is true for them. And so we're going to talk about uh, how perceptions come into play. And hopefully, my goal is never to tell you that uh, you need to stop doing what you're doing. But my goal is simply to let's take a look at God's word. And if there needs to be some readjustment somewhere, let's put that into play, because that's what being a Christian is all about. Being a follower of Christ is all about going to the standard. God's word is the only standard we should be worried about, nothing else. And then applying that standard to the way that we think. That's all I'm asking you to do. It is really, it's not that difficult if you are a follower of Christ. But if you are more in love with the world, you're more comfortable with how things are or were, or whatever you thought the world was supposed to be like, then of course it's going to be very difficult for you. But if you don't tie yourself to this place, this temporal place, then it's easier to submit over to the things of God than it is to continually hold on to the things of this fallen, broken world. Anyway, so your standard, what, what standard are you using to come up with your perspective? And I'll say this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5. Once you start thinking you know, you're going down the wrong path. Once you start believing in mankind over what God says, you're going down the wrong path. So what is your standard? What are you using to basically come up with what you feel and how you're going to respond? What is your reference point? I titled this uh, America's Going to Hell in a Handbasket because it seems like nobody's focused on anything but America. And America is not the center point of things. America is a little over 200 and some years old. I mean, we, we're the youngest nation that ever existed just about. Now, there are a few that have been broken off from other nations, but in regards to a sovereign nation, Set up, we are the youngest compared to the rest of the world. Not even mentioned in the Bible, but all of a sudden, America is God's country. Not so. America is not the reference point. America is going to fail and fall like every other place eventually. You, I mean, what, what other factors influence your perspective on things? Was it your upbringing? Was it things that you were taught? that probably need to be unlearned? Is it your social network? Who do you hang around with? Who do you get information from? Who do you get to see living life? People who look like you, think like you, act like you, speak like you, and do everything just like you? Heaven's not gonna be like that. It's going to be a, a real surprise to a lot of people who think heaven's going to be filled. Everybody who thinks the same way they do and looks like they do and acts like they do. It's not, no, there's going to be so much diversity in heaven. People are going to be surprised. That's why the churches need to look like what heaven's going to look like, or else you're selling yourself short. You're selling your congregation short. You're not exposing people to what they need to be exposed to. And of course, they're not learning what needs to be learned. Sources of information. Where are you getting your information? Are you getting it from the barbershop? Are you getting it from the hair salon? Are you getting it from one particular source or a couple particular sources? Where are you getting it from? Once again, is it people who look like you, think like you, act like you, talk like you? It's a very limited resource. 
And regardless of wherever you get your information from, if it doesn't add up to the Bible, and I don't mean add up to the Bible in a small sense, I mean add up completely. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Yes, God hates murder, period. He hates murder. But if you only focus on the murder that happens inside the womb and nothing else, that's not what I'm talking. That's not that's not up with the standard. The standard is murder, period, inside and outside the womb. So you can't claim that you're a godly person just because you hate abortion. You should hate all kinds of murder. Hate in general, which can lead to murder, if you want to expound upon that, because Jesus did. You may not murder somebody with your hand, but if you hold hatred in your heart, guess what? God sees it as a murderous attitude. You cannot just say, we do not appreciate the LBGQT movement because it's a sexual sin. And you accept the acts of people who have sex outside the institute of marriage, institution of marriage. Same, sexual sin. The consequences may be greater, but the degree of the sin is the same. I think we've, we've got it all twisted up. Again, perspective. What things have you chosen to forget or diminish in its importance? There's this movement now. We don't need to talk about the past anymore. We don't need to talk about our history. Well, at least that part of history. We need to remember this part of history, but not that part of history. History is history. Talk about it. Talk about it in the right way. Learn from it. That's our problem, America. We don't learn from our mistakes. We don't learn from our history. Yet we're bound to repeat those things. God does not operate from the same recall system we do. We are human. We are, we are we're, we're infallible. We're broken. You know, you can't just say, I'm going to forget. You can't forget. You're not designed to forget. He can forget. He forgets all of our sins. But he also knows the beginning from the end. We don't. We only know that sliver of time that he's given us to live on this planet. And you cannot gain a full, true perspective on that. It's impossible. That's why he's God and we're not. That's why he's given us his word so that we can try to learn from it. So change your perspective if it needs to be changed. Look at how you have got your perspective in place and, and, and look at how it may or may not need to be modified based on the word of God, not on anything else other than. Do you remember the good old days? I hear that now. Man, I remember the good old days. Well, was it good for you and only you? Was it good for a select few? Because the way I recall things from history, it wasn't always good for everybody. In fact, it was never good for everybody. There was always an elect or select few people that was, everything was great. You ask women, 122 years ago, was America great for them? No, they weren't even able to vote. Women's suffrage movement came into play. So what were the good old days for them? No, the good old days, they never take place. That's my point. There are no good old days. You live in a broken, fallen world, there are no good old days. The only the good days to come is when Jesus comes back and we start spending eternity with God. Those are the only good days. That's your best life. Everybody's got that term out there. I'm living my best life. No, my best life is yet to come. This is nonsense what I'm living in right now. Complete and utter nonsense and chaos. Not good whatsoever. Revelation 21, 4 tells us he's going to take away every tear. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more pain, suffering, none of that stuff. Ain't no good old days in this earth. None. We need to stop thinking like that. Change your perspective. Too many people seem to recount and kindle or kinder, I should say, the gentler past, they think, when people still left their doors unlocked and enjoyed simple things of life. Once again, it may not have been as much crime back then, because, but our population has changed. There's more people. 
People are all over the place now. There aren't small town communities anymore. We're everywhere. Our footprint is everywhere. You can't go anywhere and find somebody living somewhere. People have enough uh, technology now to capture a lot of stuff. Much of the stuff that took place back in the day, nobody knew about it. Couldn't capture it. Now it's it's, it's instant play right in there, right in your face. Humanity is better off in a lot of ways today than it was 50, 100, 200, however many years ago. Because we live longer, we're wealthier, we're safer in a lot of ways, we're better informed, and we're more prosperous than ever before. So life in general is a lot better. The life expectancy has been uh, gained in great measure compared to 1800s, for example. So yes, we are a little bit better off today than we were. So good old days in some aspects. But equally, we are worse off. Our world has have, uh, much more going on today in regards to slavery. Human trafficking is, is huge. We've got more people in slavery than ever before. We've got more wars and conflicts on every front, it seems like, than ever before. More dictators are in place than ever before. The world is much different today than it was 200, 400, 600,000 years ago. And that growth has brought good and bad. Humans are facing problems on a scale unlike anything we've ever seen before, but God has. It might be new and fresh to us, but it's nothing new to God. He has always told us about human beings and their evil ways. The days of Noah, remember that? Everybody was just evil, and that's why he destroyed the world. How about when the angels came to Lot and tried to warn him about the, the destruction, the, com the coming destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah? He says, you know, people came to his house and tried to rape the two angels disguised as, as, as young men. And Lot says, no, take my daughters before you take them. And before you know it, before nightfall came, or right as night fell, uh, nightfall came, Every man from the town came to the house to have their way. Every man. I, I don't think the sexual immorality is to that level. Every Do you think every person in your neighborhood or in your town is going to come to your house and do something like that? We really got to look at how we phrase things. And once again, you got to use the standard. Is it really that bad? to say that America, we're done. We're over. It's, it's never going to get, well, you're right in a lot of ways. It's never going to get any better. Nothing's going to get any better. The whole world's never going to get any better until the second coming. But that should not be your focus. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes too. So what the problem is, the problem is us. Whether you want to believe it, the harsh reality is all of us share a part in the destructive ways of evil. Every last one of us. You might not want to believe that. I haven't murdered anybody. I haven't stolen anything. But you are a broken, sinful individual. And none of us are perfect in any way. All of us have failed to miss the mark. If the great apostle Paul can say, I'm the greatest sinner ever, and I continue to struggle, even though I'm an apostle, I do what I want to do and not what I need to do, then of course, we are as well. We're part of the problem. Is there unforgiveness in your heart? Do you talk to your spouse in a certain way? Have you quit talking to your parents? Have you quit talking to a sibling? Do you and your children get along? Are you one way at work and another way at home or in, in the church setting? 
There's a whole bunch of stuff out there that we want to just kind of gloss over and be like, well, that's no real sin. And it's all, it's all sinful. It's all missing the mark. And it all has an effect on the world at large. No sin is done in isolation, in a vacuum. None of it. Jesus says this. He tells us from what comes out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts, all these things generate sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Pride is one thing that we don't even want to admit that we all have. We struggle with it. That's God hates it. He hates pride. The fact that you sit back and say, I don't do anything wrong, that's prideful stance. All these evils come from uh, inside and defile the person. Jesus is not saying, okay, you know what? I'm talking about that political party over there. That's, that's who I'm referring to. Or I'm talking about that group of people over there. Those are the ones that I'm talking about. No, he's talking about you and me, all of us. He's telling us that all people have the disease of sin in their heart and that he gives no indication that things will improve over time, with progress, or through any man-made policies that we come up with. That should be clear to us today. That should be very clear to us. So it has nothing to do with who's in place at the White House. Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't. Or who's governing uh, a, a state. Your political party has very little to do with the demise of the world because guess what? It's supposed to be this way. God tells us it's going to get worse and worse and worse till the second coming. What is our job? To promote godliness, be an example of godliness, and to go out and reach the lost who don't know God. You shouldn't worry about anything else. Not to the point where you start making the claim that America's done and over with because of. The last days aren't so different from the first days. When we read 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, you can see that just about everything mentioned there has, has taken place throughout time. By It doesn't matter what generation you're talking about. We must remember that all of mankind has been infected with sin since Adam and Eve fell in the garden. Humans can never, ever do anything to cure themselves or better themselves from sin. There's nothing we can do on our own, nothing. Evil today is still evil. Even though we can express it in more ways through the technological advancements that we have. We can capture things on video. We can share things to the world. We can watch it real time. Travel is easier now. Getting around is so much easier than it was in the first century. Or any century for that matter. We have the internet. So much of what we see today really is no different from what was seen before. It's just manifested itself in a different way, in a different format, but it's still the same evil. Paul never knew about the World Wide Web back in the first century, but the list of sins that he gives us in 2 Timothy 3 was a prediction that evil would one day go viral again. Not like it never happened before. Once again, remember the days of Noah. But it's going to go viral. There's going to come a time where sin is just going to manifest itself in just about every way possible. But this time, there'll be no divine intervention into the second coming of Christ. It's just going to carry on and 
until God says I'm done. That, my friend, is what we need to understand. Until that happens, we need to be on the ball for saving souls. Until that happens, we need to stop being divisive and finding ways to find uh, uh, some way to separate ourselves from somebody else or to look down on somebody else. This is the opportunity for us to go to work. We should be the busiest folks in the world right now saving souls not worrying about this country that's going to fall anyway. It's going to fall. And I don't mean don't vote. That's not what I'm saying. Don't take me the wrong way. What I'm saying is we should not be just overcome with the emotion of something that's supposed to take place. It should not be surprising to us. We should be more engaged with saving souls now and working for God more than ever before because sin is so pervasive today i don't i don't i don't understand why we're so worried about america and the, the yes america is important but the world at large is important go back to my my sermon on patriotic uh pride that lesson or the whole series of pride actually is a good one to listen to but patriotic pride in particular. The only thing we can do is believe in the gospel of Christ, accept the free gift of God, his free gift of salvation, and look forward to eternity with him. Don't look forward to eternity here. Don't look for this place to get better. Don't look for the good old days to come back. Don't look for somebody to come in and a political party or a political figure to save America. Not going to happen. Good grief. There's no need to despair. We can, Remember what I said the, the meaning of the hell in the handbasket was? The ultimate and, and, and uh, demise of a, a situation or a place like America. It's, we're going we're gonna to fail. That's just the way it is. But we should not despair in that alone. Times may be bad, but the good news of the gospel it's not only good, it's where we find victory. Focus on the victory to come. The world is getting worse. No amount of medical, intellectual, technological, or political advancements is ever going to change that. Ever going to change that. When the problem tries to, uh, to solve itself, that's a problem. And we, according to Jesus, and Mark, we are the problem. When we try to fix the problem, you it's the blind leading the blind. We're all we're broken. We can't fix it. Only Christ can fix it. The world is hopelessly broken and we cannot fix ourselves. We are not called to put our confidence in any man's devices, but rather the finished work of Christ on that cross. In him, we can have hope, we can have joy, no matter what's going on in the world. The world will not only be better someday, but also for eternity. So keep that in mind. And one thing I want you to remember, and the last thing I want you to remember is, there's nothing new under the sun. Evil has always been evil. Evil has always been pervasive. People have always been able to manifest evil in various ways. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 10 says, whatever has happened, that's what will happen again. Whatever has occurred, that's what will recur, uh, will occur again. There's nothing new under the sun. You have, God has not seen anything new today that he hasn't seen before. We're the only ones with a limited amount of time to understand what has happened and what's going to happen. So we draw our perspectives based on this limited knowledge. People may say something looks new, but it's already been around, whether it's been recorded or not. It's been around ages before we even thought about it, doing it or saying it or whatever. So keep that in mind. Look at what your mindset is and say, huh, do I need to change my perspective? 
And I guarantee you, when you change your, your perspective, you change the way you think, which changes your response to things, which changes your actions, which hopefully will get you more in alignment with doing your job of helping build the kingdom here on earth. And that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, once again, it's been real. Uh, appreciate everything.